I am sitting <laughs> at the dinner table with Chris Tompkins, who has just baked a wonderful um, lemon tart with scrumptious meringue. <laughs> and I'd like to ask her uh, why here? What's special about this place? Um, what have you done here? What is it that makes you so passionate about this place? Why here? I think there are a lot of reasons, but one, I think people tend to protect those places they love, and you can't love something unless you identify with it. So I seem to identify with these landscapes, the big, open, um, rather wild and unpopulated Patagonia region has always appealed to me greatly. When did you first come here? I was the late one. I came in 1991, 91. I've been with you in the field and it's, it's magic to, to watch you come over a hill and look at a landscape. <laughs> well, I think uh, you'd have to be blind, deaf and dumb not to respond to these landscapes and to respond to the possibility of participating in the protection and restoration of these landscapes. I think, I think all of us grew up appreciating the outdoors, climbing, skiing, hiking, whatever it was, camping. But when you look at it, that's kind of a superficial appreciation for what it is you're doing and where you're doing it. And I think that once you get involved in the participation of protecting something that means so much to you, your relationship with that place changes forever in ways that really are unspeakable. There, it's, it's a feeling that's indescribable, really. And so I feel very fortunate to be doing this in the third stage of my life. What do you hope to accomplish here in the long term? The rewilding of the Patagonia region, um, bringing some sort of balance in between human use and landscapes, habitat that are fully flourishing and as is described, not just to have biodiversity, but richness and diversity. And that requires all of the inhabitants of that landscape to be intact and evolving in their natural way, which today we know they're not. They're so intersected with human use and, in this case, 100 years of sheep ranching, dogs, and everything that goes with it. They've done many things. They've hammered the grasslands, which is a worldwide problem. You know the numbers better than I do. But fragile landscapes, arid, semi-arid steppe, being overused, very difficult to bring back given the opportunity. If they come back, it takes a long time. Species that have been pushed up into the marginal lands and in some case pushed out nearly all together. And all those things are possible to restore if you work fast, I think, and work smart and sort of nose to the grindstone, shoulder to the wheel. Um, what do you hope, what do you think people will think of you 100 years from now, you and Doug? You mean other than being crabby? <laughs> <laughs> Here's what I hope. I hope people would look at us and say they loved wild things, wild nature, and that they gave it a shot to bring that into its rightful place within the human community and somehow drag the balance back so that the human and non-human world live in some sort of, if not harmony, at least a truce. And that we participated 
in, in that effort, whatever it is, that we'll be able to line up with other people like you, like Tom Lovejoy, like many others, wherever they're working. I want to be in that group. I want to kick the bucket knowing that I can line up with the other ones. I want to be somebody who leaves a legacy that they loved land and they loved reminding people that your relationship to the land and to the non-human world is everything that makes you human. That's what I want to do. That's who I want to be. Chris Compton, thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome.